Hello everyone. Yep, it's the periodic table again. You guys haven't seen it for a while, but some things have been added to it in the last couple of days. And uh, there's another experiment in the pipeline as well that you're really going to enjoy. I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. Um, just wanted to go over a couple of the ones that have just come in. Uh, just before we also go over the gas uh, elements. So first up on the on the um, the Group One metal side. So all the angry metals. Uh, we know we've got uh, the lithium slot here, which is this cube here. So this is a cut, or, you know, pressed cube of uh, of lithium metal. And as soon as that opens up, it, it tarnishes straight away. So it can't fit in there, but there it is. It would do if it had the right case. It's under argon, so it's not reacting. Uh, next up, we've got the sodium one. So this one also goes in there, but it doesn't need to because we've got this um, other glass cube here. Uh, so that contains the sodium and it's it's nice and lightweight and beautiful and won't tarnish. So this brings me into telling you about two of well, yeah, two of the two of the cubes that came this week. The first one is one that looks distinctly similar to the sodium. Only difference is you can see there it's sort of wobbling at the surface. Um, so these are in glass for two different reasons, two completely different reasons. The one on the left is much, much denser than the one on the right. Sodium we know is the one on the right. The one on the left is in there because you don't want to ingest it, right? So this one is a poison. This one is pure mercury, right? So thankfully, it, this one fits really nicely in the periodic table now. So that's just going to sit there and not go anywhere else. Uh, the sodium one, not so much, but you know, you can squeeze it in. So yeah, good enough. Okay, so that's those ones. I've also had the rubidium and the cesium which are the super duper angry ones that I've commented on before. These ones here um, come in separate little tubes. They're both really, really well packed, right? You've got two here, you've got this one. It's relatively small. Uh, this is the rubidium sample. So very expensive for one little tiny, tiny, you know, fractions of a gram, or maybe a bit over a gram. I forget how much that is, but anyway, that's the rubidium. That goes in there, and then the most reactive one is this one, which is the cesium. This thing, you know, just by holding it in your hand for a little while, yeah, you see it's already melted, like, I mean, this is, oh, I love this thing, right? I absolutely love it. See how just from holding it a little bit of time there, it's, it's just melted, and you can see it, see it melting away. And listen to the sound, this is the sound of metal. You hear that? It's like <laughs> cesium metal sloshing up against the uh, the wall of the glass there under argon atmosphere so it doesn't tarnish. That is ultra pure, ultra beautiful and very, very expensive. Right, that one would go there. Not very stable, so I'm going to put it elsewhere. Keep it nice and safe. Right, but conspicuously missing, we have what? It's the potassium. So potassium is a little more reactive than the sodium, but nowhere near as reactive as the rubidium or the cesium. So that said, um, here is here are two samples of the potassium. I've got one of them that's come in, you know, that one centimeter cube form under argon. So just like the sodium and lithium ones and calcium one that we've had as well. So that one, you know, could go in there, but it doesn't fit. So same deal. We're gonna have to, you know, store it elsewhere to keep it safe. But then you got this one. So, you know, this this is potassium, potassium metal, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And the vial that it comes in, um, if I can find the right one, there's a lot of vials here. Um, the one that it comes in, yeah, is this one? Yes. So, what does it say? It says, melting point, 63.5 degrees. 63.5 degrees. And it also says, caution corrosive. Potassium, 99.99%. Okay, so, it's corrosive and it melts at 60 plus degrees Celsius. What do you really want to do? The first thing, what is it that you want to do? What's your gut to say, I, I just wish I could do this. I, I'm just, I just got to go and do this. You know what it is? 60 odd degrees. I think, oh, hot water will melt that, right? Hot water, it'll melt really well. It'll flow really well. And I can even out the, you know, keep it crystallizing in the bottom and just like, you know, get it working nicely. Doesn't that sound like a great idea? You melt it, just recast it, everything's going to be great. But my God, you have any idea how dangerous that is? <laughs> um, I mean, in high school, in primary school, was it high school? High school, must have been high school, yeah. We used to um, 
on occasion when we were lucky, chop little chunks of sodium, maybe a, a fingernail size, maybe one millimetre of, of that 10, 10 millimetre cube, um, and we'd throw it in water, and if we were lucky, it'd ignite and explode and freak everyone out because the explosion is rather amazing for such a tiny amount of material. Now, <laughs> this stuff is more reactive than sodium. If you threw that in water, I mean, it would just be the most ridiculously huge explosion. And it's in glass, and glass doesn't like rapid changes in temperature. So as much as I expect that it's borosilicate glass that has a better, you know, a better resistance to, you know, cracking from, from uh, sudden changes in temperature, if you do that sudden change in water and it cracks in the water, uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll be on the news the next night. Let's just say that. Uh, well, your remains will be discussed in the news on the next night. So yeah, don't do that, everyone. And I tell you, when it says corrosive, I think really... Lucitaria should do um, a bit better, better job at um, highlighting just how risky it is to do anything remotely close to water with such a large amount of that metal. Anyway. All right, so that's that. That's the group ones. Um, we've got a couple of other curious little ones here. We've got this bromine, uh, I think it's hyper, uh, what is it? The, um, uh, past the triple point or something like that. I don't know. It's super critical bromine. Um, if you take that out, I think when you shake it a little bit, you can see the vapor. Yeah. And then, where's the vapor? Come on. Disappear. There we are. I don't know. Maybe it's just the liquid. Anyway, tiny little bit of bromine, 100%. Nice little sample vial. So that's brand new. Um, that said, I've, I've always got this one here that I had from before. So I think it's a much nicer sample of the bromine. That's those ones. Um, next up is this one. So the mercury, uh, I've got that one in the glass cube. That's not going anywhere. But I had another one that came in this cube. So it's one of those standard one centimetre cubes. But, um, and it was glued shut so that none of it would leak out. Well, you know, I, I kind of want to use some of this mercury for an for um, experiment you guys are going to see pretty soon. Um, I'll give you a hint. If you saw my gallium uh, experiment the other day, talking about gallium and aluminium, um, that really should ring some bells for those um, periodic table nerds, what I might want to be doing with the mercury. So um, here's the blob of mercury that, that I will be doing it with, so not the entire cube. And fear not, I have worked out where I'm going to take the waste uh, to be disposed of in a proper way. Okay. What else did I get? Well, I got the gallium, no, sorry, germanium and ytterbium. Uh, germanium semiconductor, super pure sample of it. Um, I'm not going to get it out. I might just, no, shall I? Yes. Um, yeah, take it up there. It's, I mean, you know, medium density, quite pretty. You can get it polished better than that, but this was just a cube to um, fill the slot in the collection. So... That goes in next to the gallium that doesn't actually live here. It lives in my fridge um, because, of course, gallium melts at, uh, you know, um, body temperature as well. So much like the cesium, it'll, it'll melt. If you want to have one of those cubes that, you know, retains its, its lettering, you, you can't melt it. So it's got to keep it cold. This one isn't sealed. It's just in there as a solid. I'm just going to put it back in the fridge. Right, and then the last one, ytterbium, is the second last of the uh, rare earths, so just before lutetium, which I've got to say is one of my favourite ones because of the Luag lutetium aluminium garnets that you you get those gorgeous green crystal synthetics that um, make wonderful earrings if you if you have you know, daughters or loved ones that like that sort of fairly insane mineral. Oh, so gemstone, yeah, synthetic gemstone. Uh, ooh, last two. Two more, two more, two more. Oh, no, 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 one more. Um, the Before we get onto those gases, we've got the uranium one again. So just wanted to mention it because there's the slot. Still no plutonium or neptunium. That's not going to change anytime soon. But that one there is depleted uranium. It's under silicone oil. Hardly any radioactivity whatsoever. Most of it's alpha anyway. It's been depleted, so it's perfectly safe. And really, from where I'm sitting, you know, 30 centimetres away. If I had my Geiger counter with me, I could show you just how little radiation you get at this distance, or even right up next to it. Quite a thick bit of glass, and um, 
yeah, and under that mineral oil as well, uh, the silicone also tends to reduce the amount of radiation getting to me. Anyway, put it away. Last couple are, um, here they are, they are sample vials of mercury gas and bromine gas. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings me to a complete collection of the elemental gases. The other ones that I have, you've already seen, light up um, in the various plasma colours with the Tesla coil. Um, so I'm going to do these with the Tesla coil as well and just show you how they, or if, if they work for starters, uh, is, the, is the glass going to be thin enough to get the plasma to form? How far away are we going to be able to get it to form? And are the colours as we would expect for the elements that they are? All right, so I'll just pause for a minute and we'll get set up with the plasma globe and see how it goes, eh? Right, so this beautiful plasma globe is owned by, actually coincidentally, the girl who has the current world record for greatest child under 10. Um, yeah, she's quite amazing. But anyway, um, this is her globe and I'm gonna use it for these wonderful experiments. So here we have a tube of helium and what does it do when you, well, look at that, right, so. You see the glow immediately. Incredible. All right, next one. Keep it. Keep a yeah, record of what the colours are as well. So this is neon. I can tell you now that's the best one. That's going to be the brightest. So we're all downhill from here. Next one. This is argon. Again, wonderful. Not quite as strong, but still, still really, really nice. And two more of the noble gases that I have, and that would be Krypton in this one. Yep, it's pretty bright, pretty bright. And then the last one of the noble gases is the Xenon. And there we are. Amazing. All right, so that's the noble gases, but it's not all the gases. In the past, we've had a look at the hydrogen. So that's this little cube here contains hydrogen. Um, uh, and the way to tell is by putting it up against plasma and seeing what happens and what colour you get. There we are. So you can see the plasma. Yeah. It's harder to make the plasma uh, appear in cubes like these because they're much thicker walled. Uh, but you can, you can definitely see it in there. Right, so that's hydrogen. Uh, we've then got nitrogen and oxygen. So nitrogen is this one. See the colour. And oxygen is this little beauty. Okay, so all the gases discharge a plasma when you put, put it in touch with an electric field such as this one. Right, we've got a few more though, so not the obvious one. So this one here is what is this? This is chlorine. That's right. So chlorine also should light up, although I'm not sure I can say that conclusively with this one. I mean, I've seen it happen before, so um, it might just be the thickness of the glass in a particular spot, what do you reckon? Mm, I don't know, maybe not. It needs a Tesla coil. Oh, hang on. Um, right, that's it for those ones, and then there's the ones that, re that I received a couple of days ago. So two of those, a bit more exotic. So the first one here is bromine. Right, so bromine gas. It does, yeah, so you can see the plasma. You can see the plasma coming up. Get rid of a finger, put the finger back. I thought it might brighten up. Anyway, it's definitely there. Okay, so that's that one. And the last one, we don't think of when you think of gases at the periodic table. This one is mercury. HG is for mercury. And this one lights up even better. 
Beautiful. You know what? That is it. Enjoy the rest of your evening, morning, lunch, whatever. See you guys.